Week 11, Problem 7. Plain polarized light is instant on a single polarizing disk with a, with a direction of the electric field parallel to the direction of the transmission axis. Okay, I'm going to assume that just means that it's... Okay. Through what angle should the disk be rotated so that the intensity in the transmitted beam is reduced by a factor of that? Okay, so my first assumption is this whole single polarizing disk parallel to the direction of the transmission axis. I'm just going to assume that it's like normal. it starts off a line that, so everything passes through. So I guess it's pass it through, and then they're going to rotate the disk. And as they rotate the I guess, Polaroid filter, the uh, polarizing filter is going to reduce the intensity of the uh, light. And there's just a formula for this. It has cosine squared and intensity and theta. So polarized light formula. There we go. Click images. See if it gives me what I want. Nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Let's see. Ooh. Nope. That has tangents. Don't want tangents. I probably already passed it. Uh, did I use intensity? Tensity. Uh, polarized intensity. Intensity formula. Mm. There we go. This is. Ooh, law of malice view image malice interesting law of malice oh huh, there we go right there bam learn something new every day that's kind of cool anyway so etienne etienne louis so basically when we have light uh, the uh, final intensity is going to be initial intensity times cosine squared theta where theta is the rotation, and theta is the angle between the light's initial polarization direction and the axis of the polarizer. So, there's gonna be straight formula right here. So we're gonna do, zoom in more, enhance. Kinda like those crime shows where they just enhance through a million stages of a photo, never mind. You, you get that, you get, you get the idea. One of those get the jokes, but I'm not laughing. It's okay, I get it. All right, so our initial intensity. Ah, so we want to, through what angle should the disc be rotated so that the intensity of the transmitted beam is reduced by a factor of check. All right, so we want to reduce it so we know that I final over I initial equals one over two. Okay, which is going to equal cosine squared of theta. Therefore, we're going to do the cosine theta equals. Now, you guys already know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. When you have cosine squared theta like that, what that really means is that it's cosine of theta quantity squared. I don't know why they write it the other way. Um, probably just easier. Square root of one half. I know I should. Square root of 2 over 2, not going to happen. All right, so theta equals arc cosine. Hmm, is that going to be 45 degrees? I think that's going to be 45 degrees. Arc cosine is square root. Nope, I can do a better job than that. Square root of 1 half. Okay. So we're going to do arc cosine arcos of square root of 1 divided by 2. All right. Come on, 45 degrees. Let's go 45 degrees. Really, Wolfram, are you thinking that long? You're not thinking that long. Pyro 4, 45 degrees. Yes. I'm awesome. Good. Good for me. Good for me. So this, just formula. Know that it has cosine squared and um, um, I not. 45 degrees. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing. Exact same process, except instead of 1 over 2, we're going to have 1 over 6. So if you're wondering why I wrote 1 over 2 instead of 0.5, that's why. So I can easily finish all the other ones. I'm going to say 66 degrees. Why is there a message about that? There we go. 66 degrees. All right, and then 
after of 12. So it's probably going to be, I don't know, 75? 80. I'm going to say 80. 73.2. Bam. And that's all you have to do for this one. Not too bad. So this one is just straight formula. Uh, intensity equals uh, initial intensity times cosine squared of theta. Yeah, I'm good with that. I am good with that. All right, on to problem eight.